Hey everyone, this is Judy with JLB Crafts. Welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, thank you so much for giving me a try. This video I'm going to be setting up and hand lettering the week of August 22nd to 28th. We're on capital I this week, um, so we've got Itch, Idea, Ibex, Iffy, Imps, and Icon. So Idea and Icon, I feel like, are kind of planner words, so um, let's get started. The unique thing about I that maybe only also applies to A but very most especially with I is that this is the one capital letter that you really um, will see very frequently um, alone, not part of a word. Like, like, I want to do this or I feel like that, right? So capital I is, is a big deal to have it look good by itself. No pressure. <laughs> so um, I'm going to definitely, you're definitely going to want to play with that one. Spread it out, space it out a little bit up here on our first day so that you get a, a realistic sense of what it would look like on its own. Although it does throw you off a little bit to have it over and over and over and over again. But if you can just focus in on a single eye, that might help. So this is the last week in the August month of the Happy Planners. So it's time for me to do September. Here is September. And oh my gosh, full on half of the months are in this month. So J, we've got June, July, and January. Um, let's see. M, we've got Me March and May. So these I broke up because this is only ascenders and this has got a descender. And I like to try when I can to put the ascenders on the left and the descenders on the right rather than mixing them. And then November. So that's six of the 12 in this one month alone. So if you're looking forward to practicing um, months for handwriting in your um, planner, this is a good one. So I, um, by the time this video posts, let's see, this will be going up on all my social media channels within a day or two of this video. So uh, I've held it really straight. If you're desperate for it now, go ahead and do a screenshot of it, but you can download the image or screenshot the image specifically. Um, you can download it if you go to my Facebook page and you can screenshot it off of my Instagram. It'll be um, a post and a story. So anyway, let's get going. So I, you may be dying to know, I is for ice cream. Uh, so I got this freebie sticker sheet from uh, Simply Gilded. It was one of my I, I got it, I don't know, with a recent Simply Gilded order, and it's all, like this even looks like, at first I thought it was some kind of like cupcake or something, but I think it's just a bowl of ice cream. So these are all popsicles and ice cream. So there we go, nice pastel colors. I'm gonna have to pick pens, maybe pink, blue, yellow, like the stripes, and a brown or something, I don't know. So, um, and then I came across doing a video earlier in the week, I think it was the horizontal video I was doing back to school, and I flipped past this page, and I feel like they go really, really well together. Although, a lot of these are cupcakes, um, maybe they're like miniature ice cream cakes because you can have an my birthday's in June and so um, I ended up with a, an ice cream cake a lot as a kid um, so like who says a cupcake is just a mini single serve cake right who says you can't have a mini single serve ice cream cake and it might look something like that I don't I don't know um, but obviously ice cream cones so I'm gonna put these all over and then I have this simply gilded washi tape that I pulled it is all the same colors it's actually the tie-dye but I don't know why there's something about this that makes me think of like the swimming pool. So we're going to use this washi tape on the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and um, fast forward as I get started on this. Don't pull your washi tape super tight. I'm just going to put my washi. And this, this actually has rose gold and this is silver, but that's okay. I'm not going to let it bother me. I just think this washi tape matches way too well for me to choose not to use it because it's got a different color of foil. So, um, but as I started saying, don't pull your washi tape super tight. It's pretty much imperceptible to the naked eye, but it does stretch. And then when I unstick it from my desk and trim it, that would be what would cause my page to curl. So um, don't pull it super tight. Um, I do have a link in the description box. It's a link to sign up for Simply Gilded's No Spam newsletter. Um, and you will get a coupon code for $5 off a purchase of $15 or more. I will get that same coupon code. 
No pressure though, I have lots of coupon codes. Thank you all so, so much for supporting my Simply Gilded addiction. Um, but that works on most small to medium size orders. It covers shipping. If you do a super big order, um, shipping will probably be more than that, but. All right, so everything's a little bit random. Um, <laughs> they're not all right side up and upside down. Actually, I look like I need one something right there. Let's squeeze something in there. Maybe one of these cup, not a cupcake. It's a personal sized ice cream cake. There. Okay, so I also pulled my bullet point book. Um, I feel like I should use hearts for ice cream because we all scream for ice cream, right? Um, stars. So basically for this book, I will link a video in the cards up above on how to make this, but basically anytime I came across a page in a sticker book that was all or mostly bullet points, I pulled it out and I added it to this book. Um, let's see here. Lots of rainbows, lots of pastels. These are kind of cute. Um, these trees this came from let's see the uh i think this was socialite the classic size socialite so let's here's the mini i feel like if you were on vacation in some place that had palm trees you might be eating ice cream so let's pull some of these i'm going to stick to the more pastel colored ones because these are not the kind of bullet points that i would actually that i would want to use for a list because um, I wouldn't want to do a big check mark over those little palm trees, you know. All right, so for words, um, I don't, let's see, do I want to use, let's use a fun like pastel purple. This is a, a tool metallic pen. Um, let's write the words in with that. I think that'll be fun. So on the 22nd, we're going to do capital I. And then itch. So right away, we've got an ascender next to the capital letter. Um, idea. Um, so another ascender. This one's got the belly of the D in between, though, to create a little more space than we're going to have with the T from itch. But then we have ibex, which is actually... Um, I think an ibex is like an antelope, an African antelope or something like that. It's a big animal, I think. Um, Iffy had to throw some Fs in there for us. And since Fs are kind of both ascenders and descenders, I really never know which page to put it on. Imps. Little practical jokers. Imps. And then Icon. There we go. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. Choose some pastel pens, probably play with my lighting a little bit because pastel pens are a little bit harder to get to show up on camera. And I'll be back. Okay, so here are my pens. I have the Pastel Tombow Fudenosuke. I have the Pink Zebra Fumari. I have the Mint. Come on, focus. There we go. The Mint Calligraph from Archer and Olive, which is one of my favorites because it's got both ends are brush tip. So like the dual tip from um, Tombow, only one end is a brush tip. This is the only one I know of that's dual tip and both tips are brush. Um, and then I have the light brown um, Pentel Touch. So I'm gonna warm up with face. I'm heavy handed, so I like to warm up with my firmest pen first. So this is the Tombow Fudenosuke. Tombow is the company, the brand, and Fudenosuke is the product line. Basically it's the small firm brush tip. It's hard to get the lighting exactly right for pastel pens, so um, hopefully we can see these. Next, I have the Zebra Funwari. Zebra is the company, the brand, and Funwari is the product line. 
as opposed to like a mild liner or something from Zebra. Third, I have the mint green um, Calligraph, the fine end. So a little bit softer yet. And finally, I have the Pentel Touch Brush Sign Pen. So Pentel is the brand or the company, and Brush Sign Pen is the product line. And it's definitely the softest I'm using today. But the only thing softer than one of these, in my opinion, is the Le Pen Flex. There we go. So there are my three scoops of ice cream or my three kinds of ice cream on my popsicle. And then this is the cone or the stick, the brown. So, all right, let's look at the I. So here's the lovely letters I, capital I, um, compare in comparison with a lowercase I. So they're doing this kind of weird scoop thing, um, which I think probably goes back traditional to traditional cursive. Um, a light little hook and then a big light up and a big heavy down and you could make this little exit as big as you wanted if you wanted a connector. Pretty simple and you can see that it is slanted just um, to the same angle as the lowercase i. It's a little harder to tell because it's a loop and um, also paying attention to where they're crossing which is way down here by the baseline. All right, my second um, source of example letters here are all my sources. Okay, so we've got the Tombow, the free download, and I have this linked in all the description boxes. And this is specific for the pen that I am using. This is the Fudenosuke. This is the Fudenosuke. And since all our pens have similar size tips, it's just the firmness that varies, this would work for all of them. I tend not to like these very much because they're a little... Oh, what's the word? They're a little clunkier and they're they're very vertical, although you can change that totally. But here you can see it's actually kind of similar. They're doing their little hook. Um, this hook and start, everything was kind of way down low, closer to baseline. Here their um, hook is up toward midline. But same kind of thing. It's, I don't know, this one almost looks like a, a lowercase d to me rather than an I. You'd have to be really super careful in my opinion to keep the, the gap open there to keep this from turning into a lowercase d, at least for me. Here is the I in the rainbow um, Crayola Ligraphy book that you can get a couple different places. Um, I got mine at Dollar Tree, but I also have a link where you can get it off of Amazon. It's definitely cheaper if you can find it at your Dollar Tree, so give it a Give it a, a, a look. So this capital I, <laughs> it's just kind of a fancied up heavy down. So you can see where the dot is. That's where they start. They start way up at the top and they just do a light little entrance into it with a loop, heavy down, and then a little like curl as a foot to sit on. So interesting. Um, next we have the boxed set from Crayola. Here's the I there, and I had to look, because that's basically a lowercase l. I mean, I was like, H, I, J, okay, so that's the I. <laughs> and um, yeah, so they're starting at baseline, they're doing a big long light up, and a big cur curve loop, and then a heavy down, and they're crossing right at midline. So I is, I think, a, a, a brush lettered I is a struggle for a lot of, hand lettering. So here's the um, Calligraphy Made Easy book from, that I got at Walmart. Again, I have it linked um, from Amazon if you just want to not mess with Walmart and order it and have it delivered. So here's the first eye. So very similar to the one we just looked at. Um, starting just above midline. So this one's doing a bigger crossbar. So this one's a little more reminiscent of like a printed eye with the top and the bottom and the vertical. Um, just a little bit. And then as far as alternates go, um, here we go. Okay, so there, they're basically just doing what I just said. They're doing a heavy down and then a nice kind of swirly crisscross there. So nothing super, super exciting to me on any of those. And I remember struggling with this last year. So the next thing I like to do is pull a couple of the um, quote books from, from our 
our friends who've been doing this for a while. So Kel of a Plan. I just got her Rainbow Quotes sticker book. So let's see what we can find in here as far as eyes. So there's a capital I, but she printed it and then put it with um, a hand lettered, like bounce lettered word. Let's see what else we can find in here. Here's an, another, well, that one's stylized to be all caps. Um, what else can we find? Oh, here we go. Here's, I've got it all together. I just forgot where I put it. So all these eyes technically, technically should be capitalized. Stylistically, she's choosing to make them lowercase. I get it. I'm not complaining. Um, again, with the beginning of the of the quote, there's a, a an I there's an I didn't. So it looks to me like Heather. There's a capital I, but it's chosen to be printed. I can't adult today. Again, lowercase. So I'm not seeing a brush lettered capital I anywhere in any of Heather's examples. Again, not a criticism. Um, if you don't like your capital I, then stylistically create a. a so, so she's got a script word, a printed word, a script word, a printed word, and it looks great together. It's a, you know, it's it for emphasis, like same here. She's got script and then a printed word, and that draws your eye to this one. It makes it stand out. So that's the emphasis word. Same thing here. Worth it. Easy. Worth it. So, I mean, I get it. I'm not criticizing. I'm just observing, right? So I'm not seeing... Um, a script written eye there. How about Amber plans her day? So again, let's see what we can find. Anything that's got a capital I in it anywhere, or if we stylistically, if we kind of avoid. Okay, so there it's printed. Here's another one. Again, we've got printed and then script. I, I need the sand and the waves. So again, printed, script, printed, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that right. Printed, you know, brush lettered, printed, brush lettered. So we've avoided needing a brush lettered capital I. And I don't have any other really hand lettered quotes from anyone. Uh, there as a capital, those same capital I's. I'm so glad I live in a world so all printed and then the only hand um, brush lettered word is October's. Sorry, off camera there. Which is great. It's fine. It works. I like it. It's pretty. I would use it in my planner. Um, but it doesn't help us in making a decision on how we want to do a brush lettered I. I, I don't care. I'm not responsible. I run on. None of them are brush style. I already need a nap tomorrow. So this is definitely telling me I, 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 um, not finding any again. So what this tells me is if you struggle with your capital I, don't beat yourself up. I would say even the biggies don't love their capital I, so it won't be a surprise if we struggle with it too. And just, I mean, luckily there's no month that starts with I, so we can avoid it if we want, use some of their tactics where we write them as lower cases. So where I ended up with last year, I started, and I'll just, show, just let me just show you. This is what I ended up with last year. I, I started with my I like Happy Planner. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm way zoomed in. All right, so I started with that. I ended up not really caring for it. I got to about here and I got rid of that little hook and I ended up just making, just, just making it look kind of symmetrical. So that's where I'm going to start this year. And I will say that in my, my classic size horizontal that I do hand lettered quotes in, that's what I went with because I just, I don't know, uh, uh, grammar police maybe, I can't handle doing a lowercase i and I don't mix the, the printed i 
with the, the brush lettered very much. So anyway, enough hand waving, let's get started on this. So I'm just gonna go with what I did last year. So I'm starting about halfway between midline and baseline. Heavy down, light up, heavy down, light up. It works for me. It looks like an I, it doesn't look like an L. Um, it's symmetrical, it's got a good slant, it's the right height. So I, I think I like it better than doing something like heavy down and then trying to match these and get the curve on them correct. I just feel like that's a little bit more complex and difficult than this. This is my compromise, it's relatively easy. Now you can do your little hook there, but it causes you to push in the opposite direction of the point of the pen, if you know what I mean. So I don't really, I, uh, it's like fingernails on chalkboard, you know, I don't like doing that. So if I do that, it's okay, it's fine. But again, I feel like it's, for whatever reason, it starts to look too much like a lowercase d or even a j for some reason. I don't know why that starts to look like a j to me. Definitely starts to look like a lowercase d. So I'm gonna stick with what I ended up with last year and just keep going. And you can definitely play with how open your two scoops are, right? So if you wanna make it skinnier, or if you wanna make it fatter, So that um, is something else to play with that, you know, one may look more like an eye to you than the other. You can also play with a little bit to some extent where you're crossing there. So if I wanted to, I could cross a lot higher. Well, that one wasn't really a lot higher, but Nope. <laughs> okay, I can't play with that. <laughs> I like it. It's simple. Um, it's it's not tricky, um, and it looks like an eye to me. I was a little all over the place on where I started, up higher, down lower, and I was doing that on purpose just to see if anything clicked for me. It didn't really. Um, all right, let's 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 try putting a T right next to the I. So this does a couple things. It makes sure we come out far enough. If I did a super, super skinny one like that, I don't think I would have enough room to put any kind of a crossbar on my T at all. It also gives us a look at how a big loop on the I looks with a smaller loop on the H. And I, I think it looks fine. They're at the same angle. They have the same kind of like proportion. So I, I like it. I think that looks like the word itch to me and I'm gonna stick with that eye. definitely still struggling with how high to start this. Here I thought, well, I guess I should start it at about the same place where my T is gonna connect so that the two sides of the eye are about the same. 
And then here I thought, well, maybe I should make it the same height as where I end my H so that the two ends of the word are the same. And I still, I, I don't know. <laughs> but if that's the most I have to worry about, then I'll take it. So, all right, let's try idea. I guess I, I start, I end most of mine just kind of naturally part way in between midline and baseline. So I'll probably keep starting this at about that same height. So I used a metallic pen, it's hard for you to see that. But so an Ibex is a wild goat, uh, several species of Ibex in uh, Africa, North and East Africa and Eurasia. So there you go. They have the picture on the internet had they had huge curved, big sweeping curved horns. So, but at least, hey, we get to practice with an ascender right beside the eye, which we kind of did with the T, but we get to practice X, which we haven't done an X in a little while. So I think X will look interesting since it somewhat mimics the crisscross at the bottom of the eye. So does that look like a word? Especially if it's a word that you don't see every day. So I feel like Ibex, at least I, I probably haven't seen that word since I wrote it a year ago. Um, does it look like Ibex? Is it immediately recognizable? And to me, it is. So I'm keeping my eye the way it is, I think. Although looking at this, I always end my X up really high. So it's making me think I need to start my I at midline as well. I don't know. Does that look more balanced? Maybe. Maybe I just need to leave my X down lower. So it gives me more room for my crisscross anyway. That's kind of cute. I like that, actually I like that better. So new discovery, I'm always discovering something new. This looks too busy and it almost closes itself right there. This looks way more like an X I think than that does even. Oops, <laughs> gotta break the habit now, gotta adjust. I definitely like leaving the X down lower so that it matches the I then taking them both up higher, so. Halfway there. All right, sorry. Double Fs, just so you know, there was a double F in the next month in September, but I got rid of it because I had to squeeze in um, a month. And I think it might've been in the J week. Anyway, I got rid of the double F because I'm like, I don't need to throw double Fs at us every single week anymore. So, all right, so iffy.
So again, I'm gonna try to end my Y at the same height as I start my I for symmetry. There's a lot of beauty in nature that is based on symmetry. Oops, <laughs> that one tried to turn into an F. Oh my goodness, it's just it's not gonna work. Um, how'd I do this last year? Wow, I just let them run into each other. I guess I don't really have much of a choice. So I think I will so that since the I is the most important, try to fit it up into there, so. This makes me really glad I got rid of the double F's in September. <laughs> okay, so just the um, P, the only descender here, and uh, we haven't practiced, I feel like we haven't practiced an S in a little bit, so let's give this a shot. At least, my M, P, and S can all fit under there, so I'll be okay. So again, I think trying to keep the S ending about the same height where the I starts. Last but not least, let's try the word icon, which is a, a, a plannery word. We always have icons in our planner. So this one has no, um, no descenders, only the capital letter, no ascenders. So we should be able to, um, as long as we don't hit with our eye there, we'll be just fine on this one. So coasting to a fun end. Icon. Well, I was doing well on how high I come up on the end until that last one. That pink is a little bold compared to the other colors, but I think that says ice cream to me. I for ice cream. So let's put it in my planner and then we'll compare to last year. So there's last year. I definitely struggled with fitting iffy in here. <laughs> I just went to eyes there. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, icon, my very last row versus icon, my very last row. So 
I like it. I think um, I definitely have figured some stuff out. I like that X that I discovered. Let's look at Ibex versus Ibex over here. Yeah. What an epiphany to whenever that happens and something clicks. Ending my X down lower, I like that so much better than than these where they, they come and the crisscross gets almost entangled with that end of the X. Um, I'm definitely more um, in tune now to where I end versus just letting it go and focusing already on the beginning of the next word. So anyway, good luck with your eyes. Um, you can do it. And again, there is no shame in um, in the future writing lowercase i's and just not even ending up using the capital I very much. Um, the biggies are doing that. I, I didn't find any capital I's in any of those books, uh, at least not brush lettered. So I hope you like this video. Um, keep tagging me on Instagram. I love sharing your finished hand lettering practices. Um, if you're struggling to catch up, don't worry about it. These videos are not going anywhere. Um, the 2021 videos didn't go anywhere uh, unless YouTube puts some kind of limit on something, which I can't imagine that ever happening. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please do seriously consider liking and subscribing as it really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you.